Here is an interview with uh, Israeli government spokesman Ilan Levy on Channel 4's Krishnan Guru Murthy. Again, even if we stipulate that 12 individuals out of the literally thousands that were tens of thousands for UNRWA were involved in the October 7th attack, it is just unconscionable that governments would stop funding this uh, UN aid organization at a time where there is such overwhelming suffering, historical levels of suffering uh, that are taking place in Gaza right now. Uh, but then to uh, even contemplate that this has all just been a lie and a mechanism in which to make the Palestinian people suffer more uh, is even more grotesque. Here is um, the Israeli government spokesperson uh, being questioned as to whether they actually have evidence of their assertion. There were huge consequences as a result of your naming of people who worked for UNRWA. What the world has not seen is the accompanying evidence. I just want to know, does, is there accompanying evidence? Is there anything beyond those names? And have you shared it with the United Nations investigation that is going on? Because there is millions of pounds of aid that is resting on those claims and hundreds of thousands of lives dependent on it. When we said that UNRWA, at least 13 UNRWA staff members, and that's apart from the thousands of UNRWA graduates, but the 13 UNRWA staff members were directly involved in the October 7th massacre. That was the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, do you have any of evidence the complicity for that? That's and collusion? Because course, you have because published Because this was it. all collected because this was all collected on the basis of intelligence that Where's has been evidence? shared with our allies. Intelligence that has been shared with our allies. When I'm not was going it to shared with reveal... Britain because Britain claimed it didn't know. I can't speak to the specific intelligence that has been shared with individual Western partners, but that evidence is out there. It is clear. Is this is not direct reflection. evidence about those 13 names. Where is it? Have you passed it to the UN investigation or not? We do not trust the UN investigation so that is taking place. So there is no the evidence UN that you have placed in front of anybody the United it. Nations, the United Nations, which has been covering up the Hamas presence literally 20 meters underneath the UN headquarters in Gaza, cannot be trusted to conduct any sort of okay. internal review. Have you given the evidence the UN is part to the, the US problem. or British governments? I'm not personally aware of what material may have been passed on between our intelligence agencies. I mean, uh, Channel 4 already got hold of that document. And the fact that no one it will even assert that there is further evidence, or I should say evidence, not assertions, but nobody will even assert at, as to the existence of evidence, mm -hmm. I think gives you an indication of, uh, of just how much this is uh, BS this is. And let's me also be clear. These people were fired by, uh, the, uh, by UNRWA because UNRWA thought this is a way to get out ahead of this story to make sure that um, we protect our ability to provide assistance to the Palestinian people. And it was um, a, I guess, a tactical or strategic mistake on their part to not force um, Israel to substantiate these claims. I, I mean, I, you can't blame them. I, I don't know how I would react in that situation. Well, you know that gambit when you're cornered and you say, look over there. I mean, you're never really uh, expected to uh, um, substantiate your distraction. You just meant it as a distraction. And we got the ICJ rule in that actually this is plausibly a genocide and the world should uh, uh, look at that. And Israel said, look over there, look at UNRWA. And that's yep. what happened. Yep. Um... This is from a couple of days ago. This is from over the weekend. But it is, it, it gives you a sense of, and look, you know, the, 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 the reality of this is that, um, you know, for some of us, this is a 
prominent daily sort of awareness of what is going on in Gaza. It's quite clear um, how much of an atrocity this is. You know, broadly speaking for the American public, I don't think it's as prominent on their minds as, uh, as, as one A, we think, or certainly would hope. And on some level, you know, um, I guess my experience during the Iraq war informs that because certainly, you know, by, by, by 2005, maybe 2000, certainly by 2006, you know, we were as a country directly responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people at a minimum. And to walk around by the time you get to 2006, nobody, it, it, you wouldn't even know that uh, we were fighting a war. Um, many people attribute the uh, election of uh, the Democrats winning in Congress in 2006 to an anti-war sentiment. Uh, there certainly was an anti-war sentiment, but it really had to do with the fact that there was a uh, child predator scandal that the Republicans were, <laughs> were covering up. Um, having, having covered that myself. Um, but so on top of the natural inclination for the American public to not really give a crap about these things, we also have a news media that is either, um, biased in some instances, or really in many instances, just woefully ignorant shocking the shocking part is not the level of the ignorance the shocking part is the existence of the ignorance in a way that um i think would surprise people i mean incompetence is more often than not the answer to uh you know the the question of like stupid or evil it's it, it more often than not it's stupid it's ignorance um which is shocking in and of itself. And I can tell you as somebody who came from a different uh, uh, profession to come into this and, you know, uh, which I don't even perceive to be, you know, we, we do journalism here, but it's, uh, this is, you know, some form of infotainment. Um, I was shocked to understand the level of historical and contextual knowledge that people who work in the news media not all but mm -hmm. a lot yeah here is um msnbc correspondent matt bradley really probably an nbc correspondent on uh with uh msnbc's alex witt and this is you know this is uh, <laughs> uh yeah. play the so we are covering all of the angles of this story with reports from Israel and analysis here stateside. Let's go first to NBC's Matt Bradley joining us from Tel Aviv. Matt, welcome. What is this situation like in Rafa right now? How do you see it? Well, there's a lot of fear, but there's also a lot of starvation, a lot of homelessness, people living in tents. We're talking about 1.4 million Palestinians who are living on the edge of the Gaza Strip, right where Gaza meets Egypt's Sinai Peninsula. They are about to be pushed, or many of them fear they're about to be pushed from the Gaza Strip into the Sinai Desert. And this is why when you talk to Palestinians there, they keep up bringing this one word, the Nakba. That means catastrophe. And that happened all the way back in 1948. That's the Arabic word for when the Israeli state was created and Palestinians feel, and this is this history is still debated, Palestinians feel as though they were forced from their homes. And that is exactly what they think is happening right now because the Israelis, as you mentioned, Benjamin Netanyahu, he has said that he wants his military to explore or draw up a plan for a evacuation of civilians from Rafa. Okay, well, All right. uh, play that part again, because none of that is debated. The idea that Palestinians just decided to leave. There is no one who has done an hour and a half of reading, watched uh, just a couple of interviews, an interview with a historian. The, 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 this is not debated. 
This is not debated by any, like, I mean, you know, like I can understand if you're at a bar and you're sitting next to some dude and they turn to you, go like, yeah, it's sort of controversial about whether or not uh, Palestinians, uh, you know, if they were forced to leave. Just got me a contemplate, just even like, like, as the words come out of your mouth, you start to realize like, wait a second, why would someone just voluntarily leave their homes that they've been living in? Um, but, but you could expect that from some dude who's just, just sitting next to you at a bar, half in the bag. But this is a reporter, he's in Tel Aviv, but he's really making a point too of saying, well, you know, it's, it's debated. Really? Well, you're a reporter, you're in Tel Aviv, you're covering this. How about you take a half an hour and see how much actual debate there is by scholars, by people like historians. And if you choose not to do that, or you've done it, and you're still making the point of the debate, then, then we get into the evil, stupid type of question. But play this again. Or many of them fear they're about to be pushed from the Gaza Strip into the Sinai Desert. And this is why when you talk to Palestinians there, they keep up bringing this one word, the Nakba. That means catastrophe. And that happened all the way back in 1948. That's the Arabic word for when the Israeli Pause state it for one second. was... Also, just imagine if someone said the Holocaust. And that happened all the way back in 1945. 1944. I mean, it's just like people will be offended yeah. Yeah. all the way back. You're talking about this like it's like, you know, like uh, second president. century uh, AD. It's just absurd. All the way back. All right. Keep playing them fear they're about to be pushed from the Gaza Strip into the Sinai Desert. And this is why when you talk to Palestinians there, they keep up bringing this one word, the Nakba. That means catastrophe. And that happened all the way back in 1948. That's the Arabic word for when the Israeli state was created and Palestinians feel, and this is this history is still debated, Palestinians feel as though they were forced from their homes. And that is exactly what they think is happening right, right now. Because and, the Israelis and, 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 and. It's just not being debated. This is not being debated. I mean, is it is it debated? Did we really push uh, the uh, 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 Native Americans, Indians in this country from from the land? I mean, did we? Well, the tough thing is like, yeah. I mean, as an uh, you get why a normal person would think these things because as a as the sort of general propaganda that is that that well, that's what yeah, I'm point. Right. My point is like, yeah. if this dude is sitting next to me in a bar and he says, you know, it's still debated. I'd be like, oh, well, what did you do? Did you watch uh, MSNBC this weekend? Yeah. That's why you think it's still debated. But right. this guy's sitting in Tel Aviv and he's reporting on it. And he's saying Nakba, and he <laughs> he thinks like he's finally like he's finally like he's really pushing the envelope here. And, uh, you know, I, I, I saw this clip and um, I noticed that he follows me and I was thinking maybe this just, dude, yeah, this dude follows me. And uh, it was maybe like so some young reporter and he graduated Duke with an English lit degree in 2004. So <laughs> he's been, you know, with, working with the State Department, with the Wall Street Journal. There's no excuse not to have done this or done this research, but you can get through reporting without having grappled with history in any sort of real way. I mean, I, you know, look. I don't like to try and guess what's going on in somebody's head, right? But I find it hard to believe if you're going to make the point of like it's debated. I'm quite convinced this guy thinks he's going out on a ledge by even saying the words Nakba and telling this story, but has to feel like he has to protect himself by saying, like, yeah, it's iffy, right. it's iffy. It's, uh, <laughs> There, some people say because he got another people, crack at it i looked on his twitter page and uh he retweeted like here uh is somebody saying uh his seg retweet in his segment saying here um uh, he am talking about the nakba correctly um so maybe like him getting uh, criticized by people like us gives reporters uh the license to speak honestly about these sorts of things now i don't know but uh he at least uh looks somewhat repentant for this okay that's good i mean good for him and, you know, um, I imagine Alex Witt also probably knows the history a little bit. You should. Yeah. Oh, we're going to cover We're going to talk to a correspondent from uh, from Israel. 
I'm going to spend, you know what? I'm going to spend an hour this week and uh, just, I don't know, read Wikipedia. I mean, if you look at the images, uh, books on the Nakba, um, the uh, expulsion of people and how they're carrying their belongings uh, in long lines, it looks identical to what we're seeing now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know if I get Galaxy. The Palestinians just basically say the Nakba was bad vibes. But that's debatable because the Israelis thought it was good vibes. So, you know. You got to hear both sides. I mean, at least the guy is, is, is repentant. And, 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 and my point is less that, like, this guy, Matt Bradley, is a bad guy. The yeah. point is, this is, like, what we're getting in terms of propaganda. Right. Like, when um, uh, Thayer Ahmed, who was just on the show, said... Jordan is airlifting and airdropping supplies to Palestinians that the French are bringing in f uh, boats, you know, flotillas, essentially. Like, it sounds like rafts. And I say it sounds like because I haven't been aware of any of this. And I read the coverage from the New York Times. I read the coverage from the Washington Post. I read Haaretz. I read, I mean, I read a lot on a daily basis, more than your average person, your average person probably on a daily basis about this. In nothing. Now, I don't read European uh, newspapers, but part of the reason why we don't get that in information is because it begs the question, hey, wait a second. Why can't we do that? Um... What was the, what was the fun clip that you had?